Here's what I'm actually mad about. As you may know, the Paul Gallant Show is the official sports talk radio show in Houston of Jeremy Pena, who is your World Series MVP, who is your American League Championship Series MVP. What a damn good first season stepping into some massive shoes. He was never going to win the American League Rookie of the Year award over Julio Rodriguez of the Seattle Mariners. That just wasn't going to happen. But he is not even a finalist for the American League Rookie of the Year award. Because of the last couple of months that he had at the plate, it wasn't his best last couple of months. He did at one point have like a 270, 280 average, I think, in June. So things weren't great for Pena down the stretch until the postseason began, and then all of a sudden he took off. That was my biggest question going into this postseason. Is Jeremy Pena going to be able to be what he ultimately proved he can be? And hopefully this is just a start for Pena, who is playing like one of the best players in all of baseball this postseason. But, okay, a question. The other finalist for American League Rookie of the Year, what the bleep is a Stephen Kwan? Who is that? I had not heard of him until the playoffs against the uh, the New York Yankees with the Cleveland Guardians because he hit a home run. I had not heard of him before that. Sean Naves behind the glass. I was going to say he plays for a team I don't think you've ever heard of, the Cleveland Guardians. Cleveland Guardians. Takes a moment to remember it. They should. The problem for the for the Guardians is because they have the movie about them, Major League One and Two. Oh, they're not the Guardians now. Someone is someone gonna you know pull a George Lucas with Star Wars and add in the special effects to make it Guardians going forward? I honestly, I would kind of respect that move. I would too. If George Lucas himself did that. They gotta get and added aliens. You know the janitor from Scrubs? He is in Major League Two as one of the Guardians fans, and he's wearing a Chief headdress. Is Scrubs now a canceled show because of what took place there? You got to do this, okay, George Lucas. You got to you gotta find other things to fix, but this is the correct move. So that's Stephen Kwan. What the bleep is an Adley Rushman? Is this a World War II era member of the uh, SS? Like, what? what is that? Who is that? Catcher, it's- Baltimore Orioles, uh, 250 average. <laughs> OPS, 806, 13 home runs, 42 RBI. He had 13 home runs and 42 RBI, and we're putting him up in the finalist conversation. By the way, his name again is Adley Rushman. 5.2 wins above replacement. His name is Adley. I I don't believe this is a real person. 5.42. Oh, wow, Sean, that's so high. Is that higher than Jeremy Pena's? 5.2, yes. Damn it. Jeremy Pena's 4.8. Well, then they got to clearly redo the, the wins above and, replacement model. And he hit 253 with an OPS of 715. Hmm. So about the same average, 100 points. But more course. home runs. 22 Why? home runs. Don't bring up the nerd stats, OPS, whatever that is. Okay. On baseball slogan. Shut up. You're hurting my take. Home runs. That's all that matters. It's 2022. Power. That's it. And now we've got, like, Adley Ruskel von Winkenvoss out here as a finalist for the American League Rookie of the Year. This is outrageous. It is a crime. And when Jeremy Pena wins the MVP next year, because that's, that's like, the, the last Infinity Stone to collect, I want Adley Rushman. Is that his name? Yeah, you got it. I want Adley Ruskonsovitz. To give Jeremy Pena the trophy. I want him to hand it to him himself. Okay? Some rando Baltimore Oriole guy is a finalist. Get out of here. And on a serious note, because I'm tongue-in-cheek to an extent here. Or was I? I don't understand why we separate regular seasons from postseasons when it comes to individual awards. Because I get it from, like, the perspective of, okay, oh, Mike Trout's best player in baseball. Shohei Otani, best player in baseball. They can't help the team that they're on. Okay, but what if a guy has an incredible postseason that should be added to the resume that he had for the course of the regular season? Because, I mean, what Pena just did, as brought up on the Twitch, check that, on the text line, 713-780-3776, how well does Jeremy Pena's rookie season stack up against other rookie seasons across all sports? The guy won the gold glove, 
ALCS MVP, World Series MVP, and he had clutch hits for runs in every series. He played his best when it mattered the most. The only hole in his regular season is a hitting slump, but it's 162 games. Who doesn't slump? His defense was always there and can't be understated. That comes from James. Fair points all around. Where it stacks up against other rookie seasons across all sports, that's difficult. There's a lot of good football rookie seasons that would trump what Jeremy Pena has been able to do. A lot of them have been done by quarterbacks. Some of them have been done by wide receivers, like just a couple of years ago, like say uh, Justin Jefferson. Um, there's a long list as far as like the actual individual accomplishments of a player during a regular season. I get it's a regular season award. I feel like Jeremy Pena's postseason should have put him into this top three. That's all I'm asking for is a little bit of respect. Who the hell is Adley Rushman? I, again, I don't believe that's a real person. He played on the Orioles. Okay, he doesn't matter. Why are we doing this? Why do we always have players for teams that don't matter that are in the conversation for individual awards at the end of the year? Why? Hey, he was at the center of Baltimore Orioles' first winning season since 2016. And weren't they in fourth place with that winning season and still missed the playoffs? Yes. I know that about the Baltimore Orioles. Woo, we were ahead of the Boston Red Sox. Look at us. Outrageous. Jeremy Pena was robbed today. There was something that Astros players noticed as the parade went along. Mauricio Dubon, of course, Justin Verlander's personal valet center fielder. And the biggest move that the Astros made, according to James Click. Right, you are, Sean Mapes, behind the glass. He had some observations of his own along the parade. Oh, I saw, like, probably, like, 100,000 signs that says Mary Pena. So that thing was unreal. <laughs> Those broads better back the bleep off. Hey, you don't get that. No, you do not. Back off. Jeremy Payne is focused. Title number three for the Astros. Title number two for him. That's all he needs to be focusing on. Marry me. Excuse you. Get in line behind me. Okay? Ooh, Paul. You're finally coming out on the show today. No, I'm just saying, like, there's only one person that Jeremy Pena needs to be marrying, and it's the Paul Gallant radio program featuring Sean Mace. That's it. That's the only thing that's allowed. He can marry us because we're going to help him stay focused for the rest of the year. Jeremy Pena, what else can you do today? So you believe marriage should be between a baseball player and a radio show? Yes. Okay, that's very open-minded of you. One of the biggest regrets of Saturday. Oh, God. Where is this going? That I have was that I could not get my one on one with Jeremy Pena. And all these TV bastards with your cameras and your high tech equipment, I like you. But I wrote it down. I noticed the people who got the interviews with Jeremy Pena who did not want to talk to you guys. Did he want to talk to anybody? I can't say, but he didn't want to talk to you guys. He wanted to talk. To his friend, Paul Gallant, who introduced him to Jeremy by Pearl Jam, a very upbeat and uplifting song, okay? And you guys got in my way. Noted. Am I going to let you on the UH Cougars bandwagon now? I don't know. I'm not sure. Right now, it's just me and Jim Nance. Maybe Jeremy Branham, you know. Is he really on the bandwagon? I don't know. I'm not 100% sure. Not quite like me, you know? He wasn't acknowledged by Jim, Jim Nance. He should be, by the way. Where was Jeremy on that video? On a serious note, Jeremy's voice is amazing. That was ridiculous. My voice, I'm speaking like 130 miles per hour. You can barely understand what I'm saying. I'm just saying, oh, well, if you don't like the kooks, oh, my God, what's wrong with you? You know, it's not even a good clip. But I'm happy they put it in there. Cougar Paul here.